Hi there. I didn't hear you come in. I'm Zebulon Wadley. This is Merlin. For 20 years, I've subjected you to songs of moral decay, cosmic horror, and nihilistic abandon with my band Sons of Perdition. It's been a grim and thankless task. I've enjoyed it. So, am I here to announce a new Sons of Perdition album? No. I'm here to tell you about a book I wrote and illustrated. It's available worldwide from lulu.com right now, no matter when you watch this video. Or you can order it through your favorite local bookstore. Maybe now, maybe in a few days. I'm not really sure because I don't know how any of this works. You can also order from Amazon, but they're a terrible company, so I would really prefer it if you didn't. The book is called Death in the Age of Cowards. It's not a choose your own adventure book, because apparently that's trademarked. Instead, it's a book where the choices you make affect the protagonist, usually for the worse. Isn't that exactly what a choose-your-own-adventure book is, you may ask yourself somewhat dully? Don't be silly. The content of this book is explicit, because I wanted it to be. It's full of lusty barbarians, stomach-turning monsters, and most importantly, 50 or so ways to die. So pick it up from Lulu today, or don't. I can't tell you what to do. But if you don't, you'll be really, really sorry, and everything bad that happens in your life from this moment on will be all your fault. So, how about a little excerpt to give you a taste of what's in store? Let's uh, randomly turn to page 69 for no particular reason. On this page, the protagonist Gorm encounters a hooded figure in a tavern, a hooded figure with a sour attitude. Let's see what happens. Who art thou? To sneer in such an ungainly fashion, you ejaculate at the stranger across the room. The figure silently mouths presumably hostile words at you. You've never been so insulted. You punch men in half as you stride across the vomit-streaked floor. They explode in clouds of guts and blood, the remains settling onto the heaving decolletages of the barmaids in a fine red mist which serves to further enhance the beauty of those sumptuous wenches. As you arrive at the stranger's table, you slap the surface with your mighty hand and glare at them with bulging eyes. Before you can register what happens, the stranger whips out an obsidian dagger and drives its curvy blade through the meat of your hand, pinning it to the heavy table. A huge geyser of blood erupts, painting your practically nude body in arterial gore. What do you do? Pretend it doesn't hurt and order a grog by turning to page 25 Crush the stranger's skull like a beer can on page 214. Or call to Zenis for help by turning to page 82. Well, that sounds like the wise decision, so let's see if our good buddy the wizard Zenis can help us out here. The knife hurts. Through your gritted teeth, you manage to choke out the word help. You turn your head in time to see Zenis running out the door. Everyone in the bar laughs at you. The drunken, besotted men, the lusty barmaidens, the puke-covered drunk half asleep on the disgusting floor. You're an embarrassment. The stranger places their other hand on top of your pinned extremity. Holding it tight, they draw the dagger up your arm. It neatly slices your hand in half, then your arm up to the elbow. A low chuckle emanates from the unlit void of their face. Golden irises bore through you with malignant humor. They continue to trace the knife further up. The agony is unbearable. When the blade cleaves through your heavy shoulder, it makes a slight turn and continues up your neck. There's no blood, even as you can hear veins and cartilage popping. The cold blade seems to be cauterizing the wound, keeping you from bleeding out, even as it takes a horrid toll on your body. That cruel blade slices your hand in half before heading back down your other arm. At last, it halts its gruesome journey. Before you can breathe a sigh of relief, the stranger is on their feet. They worm their horrid fingers into your wound, bisecting the top of your head, and crack your skull in half like a pistachio. Pooling with an unholy strength, your entire body peels in half down to your swimsuit area. I told you, it gets pretty graphic. As your eyeballs dangle from their perch, you can see the uproarious laughter this has caused in the crowd of drunken morons. You start to curse them, 
but your tongue slides noiselessly out the back of your chest and wiggles impotently like soiled undies hanging on a windswept clothesline. More laughter. Sadly, this goes on for quite some time before you eventually succumb to your injuries. You aren't around long enough to know that the stranger slurps up your remains and then rudely burps up your skeleton. Oh wait, now you know. So, thanks for stopping by to hear a bit about Death in the Age of Cowards by Zebulon Watley. It's available now where you get the rest of your smut. It's also available on Lulu, and that's where I would recommend to pick it up. And also, I just realized that I deprived you of seeing the poor guy die. So, it's fully illustrated. Well, not that this will focus, but pretend it did. There you go. So, thanks again. Have a good one. See you later.